So I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom for the last three or four days now, and I'm probably about 20 or so hours into the game, and I'm absolutely having a lot of fun playing the game. However, there's one area of the game that I do want to talk about in some more detail today, and that has to do with performance of Tears of the Kingdom. Now, initially, when you start playing the game and you uh, kind of run around the, the world of the Great Sky Island and Hyrule, the frame rate appears to be very smooth and it runs at around 30 frames per second pretty much for the majority of the gameplay. So when you're running around in Hyrule, you're going to be getting a locked 30 FPS 95% of the time. But there's always going to be some occasions where the game kind of drops its frames temporarily and then it kind of fixes itself. And this is something that Digital Foundry had discussed in their a tech analysis of the game quite rightly so however as you continue to kind of go through the game and you explore different parts of the world what you find is that the frame rate takes a bit of a tumble a lot more frequently than it did when you were kind of running around in Hyrule and as you kind of continue going through the game you'll notice more times where slowdown occurs more frequently and two great examples of locations are the Goron City and Kakariko Village now both of these are somewhat accessible pretty early on in the game but basically let's take a look at both of these scenarios now Kakariko Village is pretty well documented because it was something that occurred in Breath of the Wild as well but you'll notice if you kind of run around Kakariko Village it does drop its frame rate. You can see here, it, it kind of starts at 30 and it kind of moves around a little bit. And then all of a sudden it kind of dips down as low as 20, but it does correct itself. And that is the most important thing. And I believe that Nintendo is probably doing something with the image reconstruction at that point. Potentially it's FSR1 kind of kicking in as well and trying to make sure that the frame rate is a constant 30 frames per second. So that's definitely a good thing. Now let's try turning on Ultra Hand. Now, as you can see, it is a lot more aggressive now, but it also has a side effect of tipping the frame rate to the low 20s on occasion. Now, again, most of the time when you have Ultra Hand turned on, it does still correct itself to 30 frames per second. But those kind of inconsistencies when it comes to frame rate does get a little bit annoying at times, especially again, if you're someone like myself that can sense those things. Now, if we go over to Goron City, and we try running around again. You have a very similar experience to Kakariko Village. However, check this out. Now, if I turn on Ultra Hand in one of the huts here, you can see that the frame rate is a steady 20 frames per second. It just does not move from that, from that particular number with Ultra Hand turned on. So the question is, well, what can be done? Well, of course, if you have access to a modified switch and a copy of Tears of the Kingdom, you can actually run some overclocking to help smooth out performance. Now, I guess the first question is, does overclocking actually smooth out performance on Tears of the Kingdom? Well, we're gonna go ahead and find out and see what we can do here. So once again, you'll need a copy of Tears of the Kingdom and a modified switch and some overclocking tools. Now, all that stuff is out of scope for this video. If you wanna learn about modding your Nintendo Switch and how to overclock your games, that's something that you can find on various forums such as GBA Temp, for example. I'm not going to talk about it here. And I will also make the disclaimer that if you are wanting to overclock your Nintendo Switch, there are risks involved. You could potentially damage your Switch. You could potentially fry it. All sorts of things could happen, so I'm not responsible for it. And if you're not interested in something like this, then please turn off the video right now. Let's assume that you have your Tears of the Kingdom game and a Nintendo Switch that can be modified and you have your overclocking software on, let's go ahead and jump in and see what we can do. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at Kakariko Village. Now, again, we said that without any overclocking, we when we run around kind of the, the area of the village, you can see the frame drops. And especially when we turn on something like Ultra Hand, it really does tank performance. Now, let's go ahead and start with a moderate CPU overclock to from one gigahertz, which is the stock clocks, to 1.5 gigahertz. And let's see what happens there. We're trying to determine if the game is kind of CPU bound or GPU bound or maybe it's memory clocks. Now I suspect it's probably going to be more GPU and memory clock related, but we'll go ahead and see what happens. Now at 1.5 gigahertz, as you can see, there's really not much difference here at all. In fact, the frame rate hasn't really changed any at any point 
So let's try now with a GPU overclock. So we're going to go from 768 megahertz, which is the stock docked GPU clocks. We're gonna push it to 900 to over 900 megahertz, which is kind of the maximum that it can go at least with this particular piece of software. Now, as you can see, performance is a lot smoother and it's not, it's definitely not locking at 30 frames per second, but it is a lot better. And this is a very positive thing. And if we go over to Goron City and try over there as well, you can see that the frame rate is definitely smoothed out. It's not perfect. It still has its times where it does drop its frame rate, but a GPU overclock certainly makes a difference here, at least in docked mode. Now, normally at this point, I'd kind of be stuck and I would say that there's really not much else we can do here. Obviously, pushing the GPU a little higher does help smooth out some performance that does not get us at 30 frames per second locked is there any way that we can get a 30 fps locked experience well the good news is yes we can since the last time i looked at overclocking tools on the switch there's been some advancements in some of the tools and the good news now is with a tool such as sysclock the latest version here we can now also increase memory clock now this was not something that i had access to when i was testing games such as bayonetta as well as Age of Calamity, which, which both had very, very severe performance issues. And they were mostly surrounding memory clocks because again, the memory bandwidth on the Nintendo Switch for me is probably the biggest bottleneck out of everything on the hardware right now. So it's not really a surprise that CPU doesn't make much difference and GPU does make a difference, but it doesn't really give us the desired result. So let's go ahead now and push the memory clocks beyond 1.6 gigahertz to around 1.8, which is what the setting is here. Now let's go ahead and run around in Kakariko Village again, but you're getting 30 frames per second. And no matter what I do here, I can't get that frame rate to dip below 30 FPS. So that is a really good sign. And it also just kind of proves to us that memory clocks has always been the culprit when it comes to games such as Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. Now, for the last experiment here, let's set our CPU clocks back to stock at one gigahertz and our GPU clocks back to stock at 768 megahertz. And let's just push our memory clocks to the 1.8 gigahertz that we had previously. So in other words, we've set everything back to stock except for our memory clocks. What is the result there? Well, as you can see, once again, it's running at 30 frames per second without any slowdown. And if we try the same thing in Goron City, no matter what I do with Ultra Hand, turning it off and turning it on, I can't get the, the frame counter to dip below 30 FPS. So Memory Clocks is the culprit when it comes to performance in docked mode. Now, another interesting thing that I wanted to share with you guys about Tears of the Kingdom is that on Digital Foundry's tech review, they did mention that the loading speeds of the game, just kind of the loading times, were faster than Breath of the Wild. I can definitely explain the reason why Tears of the Kingdom loads faster than Breath of the Wild, and it's simply because if you see here, when we load a game or if we kind of get to a loading screen, you can see that the CPU clocks jump significantly to 1.7 gigahertz, but notice how the GPU clocks are being reduced to about 76 megahertz so what nintendo is doing here is they're essentially just maxing out the cpu in order to allow loading to be a lot faster because when it comes to loading it's not just file access there's also things like decompression and specific algorithms that get run to prepare textures and to prepare assets in the appropriate way to be staged to be run into the game so that additional cpu clocks that you get during loading really does speed up the loading times. And this is probably the main reason why Tears of the Kingdom does load its games a lot faster than Breath of the Wild. But we are going to leave it here for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.